This is Star Talk, Cosmic Queries Edition. I have this thing called the simulation argument, which doesn't actually prove that we're in a simulation, but it tries to show that at least one of three propositions is true. So the conclusion is that either almost all civilizations at our current stage of technological development go extinct before they become technologically mature. What's Jack, up, Neil? Faithful co-host. And then the third alternative is that we are almost certainly living in a computer simulation. That what makes us conscious is not that we're made of carbon, but that our brains perform a certain type of computation. Pa Panpsychism. Organism. I mean, there are different sort of definitions, but it's broadly the view that everything is conscious and most of them would work. Um, is that a natural outflow of a sufficiently uh, complex computer simulation of the brain? One of its assumptions is what I call the substrate independence thesis, which is just the idea that in principle, you could implement consciousness, not just on you know, carbon-based biological structures, but on any suitable computational structure. I generally regard it as the person who birthed all of our sleepless nights wondering whether we are in a simulation, uh, not only from his research papers, but from his books on the subject. And he's a professor at the University of Oxford. And, and just before we get to the questions that Chuck has collected, Nick, if it's one thing to simulate all of the brains, whoever is simulating us has to simulate not only what my brain is doing, but it has to simulate all the things my brain is experiencing. So isn't the total complexity of the world, doesn't that have to be part of this simulation? Even the fact that I, as an astrophysicist, look out to the edge of the universe, decoding the nature of, of the Big Bang and all time and space that followed it. Let me just uh, offer uh, my best evidence for why I think we live in a simulation. I, I, I'm just going to go public on this. I think right when civilization is kind of going smooth, then something happens. Okay, a politician rises up, there's a war, there's a world war, there's the tsunamis, and I think they, the aliens program that in for their own entertainment. Because that's what we did in the Sim, uh, in the sim uh, games. In Sim City, where you're mayor of a city and everything's going fine, unannounced Godzilla Trouch, trounches through your city and now you have to deal with it with the fire and the police and the to rebuild the schools and that's you running the software um no the programmer sending that in without telling you that's going to happen i think all of the troubles we have in the world is evidence that the programmers need entertainment but you still need a lot of compute just to be able to complete something analogous to like a human maturation process i think uh Compute is a very important factor in driving AI progress over the last uh, eight years or so with the whole deep learning revolution. I think it's maybe two thirds of the progress we've seen is due to uh, we are applying more compute and then maybe one third is algorithmic progress. Um, I think also though, in addition to more compute, we also need some additional algorithmic insights. And right now, the amount of compute you need would be like way more than we can currently afford. And then it comes down as we make algorithmic progress. I think uh, compute is a very important factor in driving AI progress over the last uh, eight years or so with the whole deep learning revolution. I think it's maybe two thirds of the progress we've seen is due to uh, we are applying more compute and then maybe one third is algorithmic progress. Um, it's not, it, even if, if it were all compute, though, it doesn't necessarily follow that we would be able to, with our current compute, run at least a small fraction of a human level mind. Because there are two things you need the compute for. So one is to run the AI, right? Like to actually have it, do, but you also need to train up the neural network that becomes the AI. So if you don't have enough uh, compute to do the full training run, you, you might not even be able to develop the system, which then if run would constitute some kind of human equivalent level AGI. And that that's maybe the majority of what they do. 
but that they are assigned some some smaller fraction of their computational resources to doing these ancestor simulations. And so my claim would then be that, you know, if the first two alternatives of the simulation argument are false, the simulated ones at our current level of development would still vastly outnumber the original ones at our stage of development. Could it be that a civilization so advanced that they have the computational power to create all of this just for the hell of it? I'm a compatibilist to myself so i think that even if we are living in a deterministic physical universe that that would be consistent with us having in the relevant sense free will but you might have a different view on the metaphysics of free will but i i don't think the fact that we would be in a simulation would necessarily change that well i mean for, for the same reasons we if we are not in a simulation we would have this this notion of, of free will, I mean, the people in a simulation would presumably develop that for, for the same kind of reasons. Um, I mean, it connects obviously to holding people accountable for certain things they do, but if you go and punch them and achieve the same bruise, then you will be held accountable because that's something you did of your own free will. Uh, One more, uh, there's level four, level five, if you control all the energy of the universe and then, you know, you're indistinguishable from a god that anyone would have uh, uh, suggested. Now, so what are we? We're digging fossil fuels out of the earth. Oh. With, we don't so control we're, any. We don't, we're level 0. 0.5. We're level 0. 0.3. No, no, we're level zero. <laughs> okay. We're level zero. Okay. So, Nick, if there's a super intelligence, presumably they have better access to energy, especially the kind of energy you're talking about that might need this simulation. So, have you thought about where a super intelligence might fit on the Kardashev scale? Yeah, I mean, I think that would be higher up just because at that level, you would be able to run a lot more of these simulations. Frederick Johansson wants to know, is general AI really a question about hardware and processing speed? If it was, wouldn't a computer today be able to simulate a few seconds of AI like it had a thousand years to process? Hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, it's a good question. Um, I think uh, compute is a very important factor in driving AI progress over the last uh, eight years or so with the whole deep learning revolution. I think it's maybe two thirds of the progress we've seen is due to uh, we are applying more compute and then maybe one third is algorithmic progress. Um, it's not it, even if, if it were all computer, it doesn't necessarily follow that we would be able to, with our current compute, run at least a small fraction of a human level mind, because there are two things you need the compute for. So Nick, if there's a super intelligence, presumably they have better access to energy, especially the kind of energy you're talking about that might need this simulation. So have you thought about where a super intelligence might fit on the Kardashev scale? Yeah, I mean, I think that would be higher up just because at that level, you would be able to run a lot more of these simulations. Even if there were some simulations run by, I don't know, a Kardashev scale, uh, one civilization, like with the Dyson sphere around their south, and that's all they did. You know, once the civilization expands beyond that, they could run billions of times more and that would be plenty of time for them to expand beyond that. So one more, uh, there's level four, level five, if you control all the energy of the universe and then, you know, you're indistinguishable from a god that anyone would have uh, uh, suggested. So Nick, if there's a super intelligence, presumably they have better access to energy, especially the kind of energy you're talking about that might need this simulation. You can't have a universe filled with high Kardashev level civilizations because they would implode rapidly. Is that a natural outflow of a sufficiently uh, complex computer simulation of the brain? One of its assumptions is what I call the substrate independence thesis, which is just the idea that in principle, you could implement consciousness, not just on you know, carbon-based biological structures, but on any suitable computational structure. I generally regard it as the person who birthed all of our sleepless nights wondering whether we are in a simulation. Whoever's simulating us 
has to simulate not only what my brain is doing, but it has to simulate all the things my brain is experiencing. So isn't the total complexity of the world, doesn't that have to be part of this simulation? And uh, spoiler alert, it sounds like we kind of are. I've got Nick Bostrom in the house and we're talking about the simulation hypothesis. So, uh, so Nick, the simulation hypothesis requires that every simulation has computers, right? In fact, we've only had computers for like half a century. How much longer do we have technology before we exterminate ourselves? Or is everything set in stone? Are we living a predetermined life if we are in a simulation? And then Gordon Boo says on top of that, if we manage to prove that we are living in a simulation, does that mean there is or is not a God? And I was intrigued by that suggestion when I heard it in the film, that that could be the way you end up with what we call uh, consciousness. Oh, talk about Ooh. some uh, philosophical big, Ooh. big, big gun questions. So Nick, I love those questions.